my body can create its shapes and its line and it can generate its power in the way that it does, partly because of my diagnosis. Dance is some of the only times that I get to extend my body to the extent that I want to. You know, I've often been told I'm too much. <laughs> well, I can be too much on the dance floor. I love performing because it's a way to share, ultimately, who you are, the perspective you have. The building of a dance is extraordinary and so different every time. When I'm creating my own work, it's the way in which I'm trying to find that phrase that would communicate that idea that I'm thinking about. I feel many things when I dance. I often feel limitless. I often feel abandoned. Not in the sense of I am, someone has abandoned me, but I feel abandonment. I feel like I can release a lot of things. Other disabled artists have different practices when it comes to diagnosis. I find it incredibly generative to name it. Hemiplasia cerebral palsy. That term itself has wild connotations for the way in which I can understand movement and understand spatiality. I was three months old when I was diagnosed. And for at least like 20 years, it was taught to me to be erased. So I am doing this revisionist history thing by including it. I really strive to make it legible, the movement and the quakes that are generally medicalized and transfer them to artistic. Well, you're catching me at 10 years into a dance career. I was 20 when I started dancing and largely a maverick from the rest of my disability community or the disability community. There was a way in which I didn't even think that my own body would exhibit the rigor that I was endeavoring to exhibit. Now that I'm like 30, closer to injury. <laughs> you know, I find myself really dipping into a typical version of a dancer. I find similar stories of body awareness, of moving into one's body. My time in this, in this industry has lent itself to, for me to experience it typically and atypically. Uh, maybe I've given up a singular view of I've used my body correctly. The euphemisms of differently abled or, I don't know, handicapped, obviously, which is <laughs> defunct. But other euphemisms are said because that person thinks that disability is a dirty word or somehow uh, negates a agency, you know, from the body. The term disabled, it's not a dirty word. It has never been a dirty word to me. There's wild, fantastic examples and legacies of a product that has come from a disabled body, from a disabled body mind. How I reckon with this like accelerated inclusion that I'm experiencing um, with some grace. Because at the end of it and at the core of it, I do know that that, that invitation is authentic at least to some extent. I'm really encouraged by its authenticity. I'm really encouraged by like, oh, someone had the imagination to think of me in this space. And so that really allows me to, to dream with them. Ultimately, what I get most pleasure out of from dance is that it is not a typical nine to five. <laughs> I revel in the ways in which my life is not set in a box. There are so many ways in which I flow through 
a different plane as it comes to productivity that I absolutely love and want to continue until these brittle bones <laughs> turn into dust. No, I don't know. <laughs> Ain't brittle now. Ain't brittle now.